Good day and welcome to Insight, the program where we do an in-depth study into God's Word. Yes, dear friends, we are already in study number four. And today we are going to look at the offerings that we bring to God. What should our motivation be? How should we give? Is there a percentage that we should give to God? Is there special offerings that we should bring to Him? Can we come empty-handed to God? This is some of the questions that we are going to answer for you today. With me in the studio, René Furstenberg from Compass Pastoral Ministries. Good day and welcome, Rene, to Insight, the program where we do an in-depth study into God's Word. And we are already at lesson or study number four. We started with being part of God's family. Mm. Then we went on to the covenants that we have with God. And we quickly looked at the salvation covenant and the tithe covenant. And then last week, we zoomed in into the tithe contract, that tithe covenant that we have with God. And today's study is about the second part of Malachi 3, verse 8. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a very interesting study. And I do hope that all of you are watching today, that you will be truly blessed. But before we start, let's do a prayer. Let's Amen. bow our heads. Dear Lord, thank you so much that we can ask you to bless us with your holy presence. We request humbly, dear Lord, that you will send the Holy Spirit to guide us in insight and understanding of what it is that you want to teach us today. Thank you, dear Lord, that we have the privilege of asking your blessing. Amen. Amen. Before we go to, to that verse, or maybe let's go to that verse. <laughs> that, yeah, that, that specific verse, one. <laughs> that verse that we just quoted, Malachi. Chapter 3. <clears throat> I think the problem with this verse is we, we usually just concentrate on, on the first part. We, we don't realize what it's, in, what it's truly saying because just before we read it now, remember that we said in the previous, um, in the previous study that there's a difference between robbing someone and stealing from someone. When, when someone steals, they usually come quietly. You know, when no one's home and when you just arrive home, everything is gone or something has been stolen from you, you don't see the thief. Yes. But when you rob someone, a robber is someone who usually does it, does it violently. In your presence. And it's in your presence and he, he violently takes what he wants from you. So I, with that in the background, let, let's read that, that part again. Malachi 3, verse 8. <coughs> Sorry, and you are reading from? The I think it's the NIV, NIV that I'm reading from. And I am reading from the NASB. Okay. Will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how are we robbing you? In tithes and offerings. And you are under a curse, your whole nation, because you are robbing me. So, this first specifically, we have to look at this. Um, Prophet was speaking here to, to God's, God's own, own people, people. Yes. <clears throat> church people, church <laughs> people, and he was saying, "You, the whole nation, are robbing me." Now, if the words were true for them, mm. it might as well be true for us. Yes. So we are concentrating today on that second part of this verse, the offering part. Which he also says that we rob him from. Now remember, we said last week that in tithes and offerings, um, we, we literally take it violently from God. Mm -hmm, this is what mm -hmm. we, we, we utilize it for our, for our own benefit. Yes. We, we don't even try to hide the fact that we are, are using God's tithes. Yes. And this, he actually says the same thing about offering. Now, the only difference that we will see a bit later on in the study as, as we progress is that we will find that 
the tithe is a set percentage. Yes. This is, the only, this is the last time we're going to talk about tithe because we already discussed it in the last lesson. But an offering is something that you bring, uh, bring out of free, free will. Yes, it is a free will it's, offering. It's a that free you will offering that you bring. So apparently we can also violently rob God and his church of what I am supposed to bring to willingly. God. So let us, let us go and we start from Psalm 116 and I'm going to read from verse 12 to verse 14. Psalm 116 verse 12. What shall I render to the Lord? Now this is the psalmist asking a question. For all his benefits towards me, what shall I bring? Because God is so good to me. Mm. I shall lift up the cup of salvation. Mm. This is the answer. And call upon the name of the Lord. I shall pay my vows to the Lord, who may be in the presence of all his people. <clears throat> now, there's a few things coming out of that verse. It firstly says, what can, how can I repay God? And, and the first thing is not in tithes and offerings that is coming out of this specific verse. It is, I must bring my whole life. I will accept the salvation that's been given to yes, me. So that's the number one thing in the way that I can thank God for everything that he's done for me, is accepting what he, the price the that he paid. Yes. And then secondly, he says there, I shall pay my vows. Now, if somebody has been good to you, you vow that you will give something back to them. Now, in our sense that we are speaking today, our vows is our free will offerings because we want to thank God for what he has done to us. Okay. Now, from the start, when we are going to church, specifically going to church, there is one way to bring our vows to God. And that is not bringing our tithes because that belongs to God. Mm. This is the free will offerings that we bring out of thankfulness to God. So what you're saying now is I, I can't just only pay my tithe and say, but I've given to the Lord what, what he wants. That, he, that he belongs to him. For, you it, have given it, nothing. Actually, I've given nothing. I've just returned what actually belongs yes, to him. Yes. So now I need to bring something that comes from me. Yes. <laughs> and now, now why I'm saying when we go to church, because if you look at the last part of the verse, mm. it indicates there to us, in the presence of all his people. So this needs to be done publicly. Publicly amongst his people. Okay. So when we are getting together in church, this is where it comes from. Now, when we look at the Old Testament, we know there was different types of offerings. There was a sin offering, and then there was a burnt offering, and then there was other offerings that you should have brought to other people when they were poor. Um, even on, on the different feasts, there were different offerings. So... Even in, in our study for today, there is different kinds of ways to bring your thankfulness to God. Yes, can, can, shall we call them projects? <clears throat> yes. There's, there's if every church um, re, uh, are launching different projects, mm -hmm. are running different projects, um, but except for the, the special projects that every church are, are running, every church has basic Expenditures. Yes, and, and that only can be paid by the offering. Yes. Because remember, the tithe, like we said previously, belongs to God and it must be taken to his storehouse. Now, in our sense, the storehouse is the conference so that all the conference workers can be paid from that. So the local church... Needs, can, to, needs to generate the funds. To, and the only way to, they can generate funds um, is not a bazaar. <laughs> it is by our free will offerings that we bring to God in thankfulness. Okay. So what is our motivation for giving? Now I think we need to go once again <laughs> to John chapter 3 verse 16 because that is our motivation. Yes. John 3, chapter 16. <clears throat> For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So, so what is our motivation, according to that verse? Well, according, God loved 
us first. Yes. And because He loved us when we were still sinners, when we didn't even want to expect it, <clears throat> that is our motivation for giving thanks to Him. If, if, if you remember last week, I, I brought a, a quote by Charles Spurgeon. He said, um, give the way that you love. Mm -hmm. And let your gift be a testimony of how you love. It, it, it's, I love that. It's, it's very beautiful. And it says a lot. Um, but basically what it means is that God loved us first. He set the example of giving. Mm -hmm. Can I almost say he set the standard of giving. Yeah. You must give until it hurts. And he did it not because he was obligated to do it to, for us. Mm -hmm. He could have wiped everybody from the face of the earth and just started this whole earth from the from from from, from new. Scratch, yeah. But we need to give because we love, because yes. God gave, because He loved. Yes, now, and if we want to be like Him, we yes. need to do like Him. Yes, because we want to have the character of God, don't we? Yes. And and I, that brought, brings me to something else. We let, let me use an example. Many, many years ago, we, we were visiting a very, very large congregation. Mm -hmm. um, and we were sitting uh, just before the main service, and there was a lady, the head deaconess, who came to make a few announcements. And the one thing that she said that day, he remembers this now, the one thing that she said that day is, well, the towels in the ladies' um, bathrooms were now uh, too old to use. And then she said the following to this huge congregation. She said, ladies, won't you please bring all your old towels to church so that we can replace the older towels which is now there. I was truly shocked. It felt to me like God gave absolutely the best to us. He gave his son. Mm -hmm. There is no higher price. There's no, nothing greater in value that, that's the ultimate best that he could give for our mm. salvation. But we want to give our old second-hand stuff we want to give to the church. And, and we think and we think and remember if we give it to the church, we are giving it to God We're because he is God. the head of the church. That's right. So th this is now maybe a, a foolish um, <clears throat> example to use, but it, it gives you a nice idea of what we're doing. Wh when we give... Whatever we give must be our yeah, absolute base. Yes. 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 And and we also give because God promised to us. Um, I, previously, in one of our studies, we looked at Matthew 6, verse 31 to 34, and Deuteronomy 28. Now, in Deuteronomy, we know that there's the blessings. If you do what I say, you will be blessed. Yes. Now, the offerings is also one of those things. If we do it, we will be blessed. Not because we're going to receive more, mm. but by giving and sharing and seeing that somebody else is receiving. That is a blessing in itself. And then you say, but, but I can't give because I don't have enough. And then the Lord says to us in Matthew 6, verse 34, so do not worry about tomorrow. You do what you need to do to honor me yes. and let me worry about tomorrow. Yes. So our motivation is because God loved us. We should show our love. Now, there's a quote from councils on stewardship. And it says, when we're getting together, when we're getting together as a, as a congregation, this is the only way in which it is possible for us to manifest our gratitude and love towards God. So, so it doesn't say when we are singing, when we are praying, when we are listening to the sermon. It says when we are giving, we are bringing our gratitude to God. Because now, um, because I'm not a beautiful singer, so <laughs> I let somebody else sing and I say, look how beautiful we sang. But I didn't bring anything because, but when I can participate. Now the other thing is, when we are worshipping together in a church setting, we're at the divine hour. The preacher comes up. He starts preaching. One person is speaking. When we are praying, the pastoral prayer, one person is praying. There's only two occasions where the whole congregation is participating. participating and that is with the singing. 
And the giving. And the giving. Now, most people are participating in the singing. <laughs> but not all are participating in the giving. And that is also part of our worship. We must remember that. I think if we, we think about it, <clears throat> maybe the problem is that we don't, we don't plan our giving. Tithing and paying our offering should become part of our monthly budget. Yes, it should be our budget. I think that is that if you want to know how to start, this is your first step. Start by realizing that even the in, even your offering needs to be planned. So it must be in your budget. Mm. And um, the Bible says you need you, you need to give as you have decided in your heart to mm. give. So so it's not like I, uh, the, the plate comes around and now I open my, my, my purse and I see what is left in there and I scratch and wonder if there is anything to give and because I spent most of it during the week or whatever. The, the, we need to have a, a good plan of how we are going to bring our offering. Yes. This, this reminds me of something that happened uh, at a workers' meeting many moons ago. We were talking as pastors and um, the one pastor said, do you have the same problem that I have? I get traffic tickets every single month. <laughs> and, you know, when you are late for a church board or when you are late for church and you've got many things to do, you more often than not go over the speed limit. <clears throat> and then there's a camera somewhere that will take a picture of you and, and you will get a nice uh, pink slip with it. Um, but one of the older gentlemen stood up and he said, friends, if you don't want speeding tickets, budget for it in your budget. Because if you see that amount that you must pay, all of a sudden you will be careful when you drive. Now this is the same thing with offering. As soon as you start budgeting for it, it's not an issue anymore. Yeah. But it's more often than not, people come to church, they take their wallet out, they take their purse out, and they decide then and there what they want to give. Oh, I only have 200, so let me not give today. Or <clears throat> I only have a five rand, let me give that. But as soon as you start planning in your budget, and you even uh, like your tithe, Set it aside prepare, prepare when you the start before. the month. Mm. It is there. You can go. You can take it out. You go with a, with a good heart. You have planned for it. And you put it in, in, the, in the offering plate. And you bring your offering to God with a thankful Full heart. But this actually brings us to a second thing. It <clears> means <throat> that you now, if you want to plan how to give, you need to get involved in your church um, and you, you need to know where to planning give, sessions, what to give for. In, in your, in your um, business, meetings. business meetings, because how are you going to know what to give for? Yes. You, you need to know what projects your church are running. You need to know when you get your financial report, how is our, how's our church doing? Can we pay the water and light bill? Can we have someone to look after the, um, the, garden, the garden or the inside of the church? What is it that the church needs? and requires and then we do this prayerfully and we ask lord what is it that you want me to contribute to because for as much as we want to run a huge evangelistic um, meeting or campaign. or a campaign um, if our church is falling apart and it looks horrible yeah. on the outside or even on the inside it's not good taken care of that is also not in God's will because God said to Nehemiah, yeah. when Nehemiah looked, looked at the people when he realized they were not paying their tithes and offerings, and he said, why is God's house in such a state, in such a terrible state? And he asked the people to bring their tithes and offerings back to the, to the temple so that the temple could be, be rebuilt. rebuilt. God's house. So, because we, I don't know when was the last time you checked, um, and we're speaking to, to members mm. of churches here. Stand in front of your house, see how it looks, see how the inside looks. Go to God's house. If, if your his house, house <laughs> is looking worse than your house, there's a problem in your congregation. Mm. It should look better. 
than your house. But um, the, the next question comes up, but how much do I give? And I first want to go to 2 Corinthians 9, okay. verse 6 and 7. I think you have it there. I have it here for us, and it says, um, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 and 7 says, Now this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So it, that, that is just uh, a fact. Mm. If you only sow a handful, you will only get so many plants. But if you sow a bagful, yes. you will get a, many more. A great harvest, yes. yes. Each one, now, this is verse 7. Each one, not the church for you, mm. each one, must do just as he has proposed in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So every one of us must decide on our own, what are we bringing back to God? Mm. Um, and then when we have decided, let's not change our minds afterwards. You know, there's, there's a few examples in scripture where they said, we're going to give this to the Lord, and then they decide otherwise not. Give to the Lord, and if you have made a promise to the Lord, keep if it. He blesses you in this way, keep your promise and give back to the mm. Lord because it's just the right thing to do. Not always expecting a blessing on it. You know, if we just do things to, to, to receive blessings, we, we don't do it because we love. Mm. We do it because we want to receive. Mm. Um, and, and this makes me think of one of my colleagues said this uh, in a sermon a while back. He said, we don't want the presence of God. We only want the blessings of God. Mm. Now, the presence of God should be much more worth to us mm. than the blessings. But that brings us back to the fact that we need to give out of love. Mm. <clears throat> because we love the church and we want to be proud of our churches. And we want to be proud of the work that our church do. And, and, and this is God's church, right? Yes. And we are proud to say to people, this is God's church. But how does our churches look? But what are we going to say if someone says, but doesn't God say that he owns the cattle on a thousand hills? Yes, but so, he So if he wants to look after, it's his church. If he wants to look after the church, he can do it. He can do it. He doesn't need, need my money. He doesn't need our money. I think that's one thing that we need to make. Let's, let's, just, let's just go back <laughs> to, to, to the beginning of our study. 100% of what you have is actually God's. Yeah. He just... <laughs> wants you to bring 10% back because that is what you need to do. Mm. The others he gives to you so to that manage. you can honor him yeah. in what you are doing. Let us go to Deuteronomy 16, verse 17. And this is also a, a very important verse for us. And, and this is the one thing where I, I don't want to say I want to change God's word, but we need to, if you read it, you will understand what I'm saying. Um, 16 verse? Verse 17. Okay. 16 verse 17. And what does it say in your Bible? Each of you must bring a gift in proportion to the way the Lord your God has blessed you. Okay, you wow. see, so, so your translation doesn't have to change. Mine need to change because it says only every man. <laughs> and okay. I want to say every man and, and woman, woman. Okay. shall give as he so is able according to the blessing of the Lord your God, which he has given you. So this is very important for us. If you receive a big blessing, maybe it is good health. Right? It's good health. It was that not, is a it, tremendous it, blessing. It was not money. Mm. It was good health. Yes. Maybe you received something else that was not money, but you want to thank God you need to bring it back into proportion to what you have received. Um, when, when you receive, um, when I give my wife a lollipop, she will say, thank you, my dear. That's all. When I come home with a brand new car, <laughs> she's not just going to say, oh, thank you, my dear. <laughs> um, the, the way that she's going to thank me is going to be totally different. Am I right or am I wrong? <laughs> yes, you're so, right. so, so the bigger the blessing you receive, the, the, the thanks should be in proportion to what you have received. 
No, but I think, um, can it be that we um, have become a little bit, I must choose my words very, very well now here, a bit arrogant in the sense that we have this idea that I'm a Christian and God's supposed to look after me and he is supposed to bless me because he promised it. And we, we have this attitude of, but you are supposed to do this and this and this for me, God, because I am mm -hmm. worshiping you. I am following you. I'm mm -hmm. coming to church every week. So <clears throat> why are you touching my money? Because let me tell you one thing, if you want problems, you touch someone's wallet. No, no, no. I think, I think <laughs> church people knows this. As soon as you've got a business meeting and you are telling them that you are going to spend the money, everybody is there. <laughs> now, I have done it sometimes because some people just don't want to attend the business meetings. So I just tell them, well, if there's only three people, we are going to sell this church and buy a new one somewhere else. And then the rumor spreads and then everybody comes and says, I'm so thankful that you are here so that we can start <laughs> discuss God's money. I, I, want, I want us to just focus on a part of, of verse 16. We are still in Deuteronomy 16. Verse 16, I just want to lead, read that last part. We did focus on it last week, but it's so important that we just remind everyone of what God is saying. Yeah, read the whole verse. Read the whole Can verse. I read the whole verse? All right. Three times a year, all your men must appear before the Lord your God at a place that he will choose. At the festival of unleavened bread, the festival of weeks and the festival of tabernacles. And then this part that I really want us to concentrate on. No one should appear before the Lord empty handed. All right. Now, let's just bring this into perspective. They had to go to a certain place where God has appointed for them to go and worship. God has appointed a place for us to go and worship. And that is the local congregation. So when we go there as... God's people to get to worship. How should we go there? Well, not oh, but anything. I have my Bible in my hand, Pastor. <laughs> no, no, that means you should not go empty-handed. There should be a offering in your hand according to your blessing. Mm. Um, this is one of the things that we really need to know. And it is, like I said um, earlier, it is one of the ways that the whole congregation can participate mm. in the worship. Um, in some churches, I, I'm going to say this, uh, maybe I'm going to get a lot of flack from people, but some people, when we are in the Sabbath school, they just send the offering plate around while people are busy already with the studies, with, with God's this, words, yeah. the lesson study. And then people are just putting it in there. It is not part of worship. It should actually be part of the section where everybody can pay his attention to worshiping God because it is as much part of the worship as he's reading the Bible, as he's praying. Okay, so, so what, basically what you're saying is when, when we take off the offering, we actually need to be just as reverent as though we were on our knees. Yes, because it is thanking God for his blessings. Yes. That is actually very important. And, 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 and I've seen this a lot of times. People come to church and then they just say, no, they just shake their head. Now, this verse tells me you cannot come to God in his presence empty-handed. You know, it was in the olden days when you, when you wanted to see the king or somebody that was a higher official than you. You always had to bring a gift. Yeah. Now, how dare we? come into the presence of the king of the universe. Empty-handed. Empty-handed. And we just think, uh, he will be fine with it. Um, we are dishonoring God if we are worshipping empty-handed. I want to say at this moment, you need to teach your children to plan giving even from a very young age. It's not about how much they give. It's about not coming to God empty-handed. Yes. So even as a young child, you need to teach them how to tithe. You need to teach them how to plan for offering. Mm -hmm. So that when they grow up and they, they walk into the business world 
or wherever they are. Go they are. When they're getting their first paycheck, <laughs> and then you want to start fighting about yeah. returning tithes. Yeah. Uh, before they buy that new car with the first, <laughs> with the with the first paycheck or whatever it is that they've dreamed of spending their money on, they need to be reminded as as was their practice as their parents taught them. Hmm. Bring your tithe and make sure that you plan your, 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 your offering. offering. Bring a planned offering. To God. And that will keep them in that um, beautiful practice of honoring God with what he has entrusted them with. Now, now this is the other thing. We know God is present everywhere through his spirit that means and and we are praying this every single time with that when we're in church that god is there mm. but when god is there he notices everything that we are doing even if we say we don't have money but it's in our pockets mm. and we don't want to give god even sees that now we must remember the other thing there's more verses in the whole of the four Gospels, talking about money than any other subject. So, God gives us means, but He expects us to use that means not only for our own gratification, mm. but also to honor Him. So, let's just see if you agree with me that God sees. Let's go to Mark chapter 12. Verse 41 to 44. And then we can also go, I see you are paging there. Mm -hmm. So I will go to Acts chapter 10. And you can read those uh, verses and then we can quickly okay. discuss that one. Mark 12 is fun from verse 41. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all that she had to live on. Right, so in this specific part of scripture, Jesus is sitting and watching. This is interesting, he, 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 he's he, he, actually sitting there where he can see people bringing their yes. offerings into the treasury. And, and, and he's doing that to teach his disciples a lesson. But he also says that he's seeing, and he's not only seeing what she's putting in, He's seeing with the attitude of what, how she's giving. Mm. So that is very important for us. Now, just, just for those of you who are deacons in church, please don't watch <laughs> what people put into the offering plate. Because even if it is the little one that puts in 10 cents, which is not worth a lot today, it is like this woman. Because they give it out of what they want to give, and that can be blessed much more than the hundred or the two hundred that the millionaire gives, if you follow what I'm saying. Mm. So it is very important that we do not look at what people give, but God sees and he knows the heart and he knows how you have been blessed. And then more often than not, we come empty handed. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Acts chapter 10 and the first four verses and I'm reading. Now there was a man at Caesare named Cornelius, a centurion, of what was called the Italian cohort. A devout man and one who feared God with all his household. Remember, this was a Roman centurion, mm. not a Jew. But he was a devout man. One who feared God with all his household and gave many alms to the Jewish people and prayed to God continually. Oh, he's a good man. He gives to the Jews. Uh, so what is that? Uh, you know, some of us do the same thing. Let's read verse 4. And fixing his gaze on him and being much alarmed, he said, What is it, Lord? Because it is now the angel An of the angel Lord. An angel appeared to him now. And yeah. he said to him, Your prayers 
heart. Remember, our prayers comes to God. And what is the next thing? And alms have ascended as a memorial before God. So, so the way that you pray and the way that you give, God saw both. Yes. And it pleased God. Yes. So here comes another thing. Now, this is the two, two that we need to now look at it. The, the widower brought money to the church. Mm. That was the offering to the church. The centurion gave alms to, to some of the Jews that were struggling. He was not in church. Mm. So that also tells us that we cannot skip the one but just give to the other one. So if I want to help my neighbor, don't take the money which you have put aside for God and for his church to be run and give it to somebody else. If you want to give, give from your money to the neighbor or to somebody who's struggling. Don't take God's money to use that. Again, that, that, there's, that your, very there's, important. Your, there's your planning. Your church has certain <clears throat> expenditures that needs to be paid. How are you contributing towards yes. that? And there are certain projects, whether it's your neighbor that's struggling or a project that your church is running that you need to budget for. You can decide what, which project it is that you want to contribute to. But again, you need to plan your offering. Yes. Now, let's go to the last um, section of our study that, that talks about special offerings, special projects. Now, now big the, projects. Big projects. Now, this is now the building of the church, the building of the church hall. Um, maybe we want to go on a mission trip and we want to go bless somebody by building something for them. Um, this is things that we need to plan. And, and it might and take a few a few months, months or sometimes even a year yeah, or two to, for to us get to, the money to get the money together for yeah. that. So let us go to... Mark chapter 14, if you can get that for us, verse 3 to 9, and then I will go to John, and it speaks basically about the same thing. Mark, Mark chapter 14, verse 3 to 4, and then I am at John chapter 12. Okay. While he was in Bethany reclining at a table in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made from of pure nard, she broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to, the, to one another, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Yes. So in, in John chapter 12, we find the same thing. It is Mary that is now anointing Jesus with that very, very expensive... Jar of perfume, yes. yes. So, and it says there to us, in, in some translations, it says three, 300 um, pieces, right? In, like in yours, it says it is a year's wages. Now, that's basically the same thing because it was a year's wages of a, a daily worker, laborer, working for a whole year. Mm. Now, if you can save up that money, it doesn't mean you have saved up for one year because you 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 were living You're only also putting you need away to live a portion, a portion away of every that. day yeah so so this amount that was gathered by her to to purchase this job to purchase yeah. and to invest can i put it invest that into that 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 perfume that she could sell maybe again later she invested her whole life part of her life for that, for the special project. And, and we neglect to, to give for special projects and give large sums of money mm. um, for special projects. Now, I know um, in, in yester here in the church, uh, people of old, they were planning when they go to sleep in Jesus. Then they leave some of their inheritance to the church. Now, I think we do not have to wait for that time, only to leave something to God's church, to bless the church, so that the church can go um, in advance. 
we should plan to do this even now. Now, you get, you get some people that say, but um, yes, but I don't earn anything. I don't have anything. I had this uh, two or three weeks ago. Somebody said to me, but how can I give if I don't have? And I said, but that's very odd that, that somebody in today's age doesn't have anything. Because if somebody is buying you food, buying you clay, clothes, giving you board and lodging, and you're not getting monetary, you are getting blessings in another way. And in that same manner, you must try to pass on that blessings to somebody else. Mm. Not just sitting and lying idle at home, just waiting for my another plate of food, because God is blessing you through somebody else. Mm. So why can't you just pick yourself up because y you have now food in your tummy and you've got energy and you can go help an elderly person or something, or, or even if you have money. Um, we've got a building project in one of our churches and there people came to me and said, Pastor, you must tell us what you need mm. because um, I, can, I can sponsor and I can go buy a door I can bring the door. The other one said, I can bring a window. And, and this is other ways how we can build up God's church. Unfortunately, we thinking more of our own at home mm. than at God's house. And offerings, we need to understand that <clears throat> it is very important for us to bring offerings to God. Now in our system, half of the money that comes into the plate goes to the conference for some extra work that they do with it and uh, evangelism that is done with that. And then the rest of the 50% stays with the local church. Now, in any church budget, about 40% of your budget, your money that comes in, goes for water and electricity and municipal bills and let's say if you've got Wi-Fi and things like that. Hmm. So <clears throat> you only have 60% left for evangelism, for the pathfinders, for something else. So we need to make sure that when we give, we give, like you said, we must plan. We must give in the right way. This also I have found in many churches that people, uh, there was 10 years ago, we, we had a pledge and we are bringing money for the building fund. I'm getting to that church, sitting on the first business meeting, and I see that there's lots a of huge money amount in, the, in building the building fund. fund. And my first question, which I'm asking, I said, what are we building? And then the people say, no, but that was when we were We're still done building now, the, church. the church. So oh. why are we still giving for that? Because the church honors your way in where you want to give. So, and, and this is what you have said in the beginning. When we bring offerings to God, Make sure that you know where is the need. Mm. And then you give for that need. But I think, like you said in the beginning, we must plan, must make sure that we're not coming empty-handed to God. And then the other thing, we must make sure that we know where to give and give according to our blessing. Yes. I think um, just to end off with a reminder, God loves a cheerful <clears throat> giver. Yes, don't give grudgingly. Yeah, d don't give with a long face or try to let other people know just how hard it was for you to give this. It's, it's, it, that's not proper behavior for a Christian. We need to give to God because we give it to God. It's His church, but in the end, we give it to Him. Yes. And to utilize as he needs to, 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 to build his church and to let his, ch his church grow. So it's a privilege to be able to give. And even if you are like this lady at the steps of the temple who could only give two little copper coins that the Bible says it was only worth a few cents, it, that's not what it's about. It's about bringing what you are able to bring. Don't come before God empty-handed. While you were speaking, I was thinking, <clears throat> maybe I'm going to get into a lot of trouble. <laughs> but let me say this. 
because this is something that is heavy on my heart. As soon as your neighbor next to you have put a note in the plate and your note is bigger, <clears throat> don't put your note in there and take change. <laughs> yes, we've seen that. I, I've we? seen that. <laughs> because if somebody else has given and it's in the plate, it's not it's yours. God's. Yeah. It is not an exchange rate. It's not something like that. It belongs to God. So let us make but sure. But that also speaks of poor planning. If, yes, if, because if you, you should only, plan what you want to give. If you only give. wanted to put a 10 rand into the plate, you, you needed to make change yesterday in, when we were preparing for your, for your offering. Yes. And, and so, that is part of preparation for the Sabbath. That's right, yes. All right. Okay. Renee, it was good to have you once again here in the studio talking about something that is very close to our hearts but also very close to our pockets <laughs> and i think all of us need to to work on our way of giving our offerings to god because offerings should also be something um, that you sacrifice that is actually the word that i want to use when you bring an offering it's a sacrifice you need to sacrifice something by only taking a few rants out if you have a lot it's not a sacrifice so we have to give and sacrifice to god so that his kingdom can grow it also yeah. says your heart is where your treasure is let us make sure that our treasure is in heaven with jesus christ mm -hmm. let us close your eyes as we pray dear heavenly father what a wonderful privilege that we could have discussed this important matter yes lord Sometimes it comes close to our hearts. Sometimes it comes close to our pockets. But it is very important because as we are praying, as we are singing, as we are listening to your word, bringing offerings to you is also a part of worship. We want to thank you for the blessings which you bestow upon us. Help us to work on this matter in our lives so that we can honor you through our giving of what you have done for us. This we pray in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. God bless and we see you next week.